Compare that to this. How to get it in and wiggling it around, moving the... Hey guys, welcome to Sandy's Garage. Oh, I just got back from a flight a few hours ago and I was so tired. I was away for a week. Three round trips in a week. Kind of Dubai, Florida, and now New York. Manhattan, New York City over there. So I'm here alone. Now we're heading eastbound. I was just called by the uh, controller through something called a cell call, calling me uh, to get our oceanic clearance, what speed and what height we need to cross the ocean because there's, there's no true radar coverage over there. So we have to maintain a specific speed and a specific flight levels, uh, height. Wait a minute, let me get back to have to call him. So this is the message that he told us. Ever wonder how we eat? Better than first class. Better than first class, baby. I'm at Haifa, Israel. I don't know if you remember uh, shirts that I have uh, on my website from Harley Davidson, Israel, has on the back the Baha'i Gardens in Haifa. I'm right here. This is, you can see it from here. Let me zoom in. Really cool. The Baha'i Gardens, the Baha'i Baha Temple. I just got home and literally fell asleep, woke up. I said, I have to get the tires, the wheels changed. I'm doing it to Stryker, my 2022 Royal Enfield 350 Classic. And I got these amazing, I think really cool, off-road, kind of off-road. They're, they're 30, 70 or 20, 80, like 30% uh, off-road, 70% on-road. I want to give it that off-road look, military style. So I took the wheels off. I really didn't have time or patience or the mood to take the camera out and show you how I took off the wheels. It's really easy. I was able to do it myself. I'm gonna take it now to Mike from, Custom, from Torque Custom Cycles. He's gonna help me out. Really, really great to have him uh, on board. You know, you can literally take the tires off. There are tubes in them. You can take them off yourself, but it's just, you know, a hassle. And as you see, they're blacked out, so I don't want to scratch them. Although there are plastic tools, yeah, I know, I know. And I pretty much have the, all the tools. So I have the privilege of being uh, very close to Torque Custom Cycles, that he's going to help me replace these wheels. So that's where we're heading next. Actual uh, process itself, I, I'm not going to elaborate too much, but... I started with the front. I lo I lifted it with the let's roll only the center, the center uh, jack, the scissor, scissor jack, and it's pretty nicely balanced. So it was pretty much only actually this axle. It was a, a nut on one side and a washer. Take the nut out and pull the whole thing. There's there's a bushing that goes over here, and just take it all out, and that's it. Very very easy. Not too different from the back. Back same thing. What's different a little bit is that there's two bushings and then there's these chain tension mechanism. But again, uh, I'm not gonna go into it too much. So the bike is uh, lifted and I got Shinko 705s, Shinko. They look really aggressive, but they're actually very good on the highway as well. So they're not noisy. They're not, they're very smooth as well. So I get the looks, I get slightly functionality of off-road and it's worth it, I think. This is a rear tire. Look how nice and aggressive it is. Okay, and that's compared. Compare that to this. Okay. 
and that's the front. As you see over here, the front that I got is uh, is actually, there it is, 110 by 80, 19. 110, 80, but the original is actually, it's 100 by 90, 19. So what it pretty much means as, let me try to make sense of what, what the tire selection uh, means. 100 means the width of the tires, of this tire in millimeters. So 100 is 10 centimeters. 100 millimeters. 90, the second digit, is ha uh, what percent of the width is the height? So this 90 means that uh, the actual height is 90% of the 100. So it's pretty much 90, in this case it's 90 millimeters. And the 19 is the radial, is the radius of the, the actual rim. So I wasn't sure, they didn't have exact size with Shinko, but I got something that's very close. First of all, most important is the, is the radius of the, of the rim. It's 19, that's the same. That means it will fit on the rim. But I got 110, which means it's a little bit wider, a wider tire. The height is 80% of 110. So that also very, very close. The width, and the height came out very close. If you do the math, it came out very close to this. Let's see them from here. Here you can see that this is slightly, slightly wider than this. But the height itself, like the profile, is pretty much almost the same. Because 90% of 100 is 90. And 80% of 110 is 88. So this is 90 centi uh, millimeters, and this one is 88 millimeters. So it's very, very small difference. Look at this Roadline ST. Believe it or not, it actually started at a, as a Street Glide ST, and it converted to a Road Glide ST. Mike just put a 570. Two? 572 in it, racing. Yep. And, uh, and Start racing the valve springs. Those are the stock valves. Took the valve, the stock ones out, and uh, installed. Star racing. Star racing. Higher performance, better to take care of uh, the valves. And then he's gonna tune it. So I just got over to Mike. Uh, it's raining outside. Gonna wait a little bit to take the tires and wheels out, and we'll do it very soon. bike is really nice. Yeah. Got a front end, wow. Yeah, front end. It's got the Kraus T-bar set up. Front end. Check out the gauge relocation package. That's on this thing when you go around. Look at where the gauges are. It's pretty cool. Here on top of the windshield. Oh, up there.
with that soy sauce? Yeah. Slippery and sticky slaughter. <laughs> soy sauce. Not gonna happen. If not, I'll just use it. Beat is not popping, or there's no, probably not gonna. No, it's on. You're not gonna get that nice pop, guys. Yeah. The 30. I like these. I like these weights. Now we're working on the front. We're all done. Mike, thank you so much, guys. No this is the place. Tour Custom Cycles. Mike and I are gonna do something really cool in the next uh, next month. So stay tuned for that. I think you guys know, got a hint there with uh, John saying something about a, a CAM or something like that. So stay tuned for that. It's coming up very soon. The wheels are back in the garage. Let's put the bike together again. Back together again. Start with the back. Okay, guys, I got the back, the back wheel on. Let me tell you, it's prefer, uh, it's a two wheel. I mean, it's a two person job. Although I'm one person, you can actually do it. One person, if you have a lift, a lot of patience, like patience of steel, because it's a lot of uh, p parts fitting in, like just precisely. First, you have to get the uh, axle in through here. And it goes through another tension, uh, chain tension, tension mechanism. Then it goes through a, a bushing, goes through the actual uh, bearing of the wheel, goes in through the other side. Then another, I don't know if you can see it, another bushing. And then it needs to go, the disc needs to go through the brake, through the, uh, the pads. I didn't say before, but you have to make sure the the chain is mounted on properly. And then finally, once you get the axle in, it has to go through the bushing on the other side, through the swing arm on this side, through the chain tension mechanism, and then to find the nut. A lot of, you know, finding the how to get it in and wiggling it around, moving the tire, the wheel up and down until you finally get it. Uh, a lot of work, not hard work, but a lot of, you know, precise work. So I didn't, I didn't have an option to, to give you a uh, footage of it because uh, cause I needed both of my hands, feet, and I used my teeth for holding, uh, tilting the bike. So now I'm going to put the front, front one on. Front wheel should be easier because all you need to do is to meet the brake uh, disc with the pads and get these in place with the proper bushings and there's way more room it's more open so it's going to be easier so this part was pretty much uh trying to get the hole on the wheel and uh you know on the forks aligned lowering the bike a little bit uh with the jack trying to get it exactly in front uh, you know, wiggling in and out, uh, forward, backwards, just trying to get it aligned. A real uh, headache. The problem is, is that the brake uh, pads were were not uh, hugging the disc properly, and they weren't closed. They were properly uh, properly fit. They were. I made sure I put it between the two brake pads. I put while the wheel was not on. I put a piece of cardboard so it doesn't close. But still, it was very difficult to slide. The disc into the brake pads in between the brake pads so eventually i had no choice uh to take the whole assembly the brake caliper off to take it off the bike a bit of a hassle but i guess uh, once i once i got that off it was uh really easy to you know to install back 
the axle to align it up with the forks. That was so easy. I, I, I just couldn't get it through. I had to take this off. Otherwise, it's going to take me forever. Let me hang this somewhere. Um, that's it. Once you get access and everything, it's so easy to align it. Get the axle in, push it in. It goes right into place. Put the nut, the washer, I mean washer and nut, close it, tighten it up. Obviously two very specific and uh, now let's put the brake pads caliper back on. This one is 32 tons per, per square gallon. Once more. Bottom one, got it. Now it's time to take it out and show you a little walk around. But look at this, you gotta be crazy. I'm not, I'm not taking the bike out, no way. Gonna wait for when the rain stops, maybe even a few, in a few hours, so. Gonna take it off road a little bit see i don't think it's gonna be that much of a difference because i don't take it hardcore anyway in any case but i actually did it for the look and just for a little bit you know off road i'll be doing with it hope you hope you enjoyed this one i'm sandy watching holy shift till the next video guys peace out yeah.